are now looking at uh, trouble in paradise. The electric vehicle, which was once hailed as our planet's saviour, is having a few PR issues at the moment. And with apologies to Volkswagen, we'll use this e-golf to explain why. Although it's currently not for sale in Southern Africa, VWSA brought this white demonstration vehicle to gauge the immeasurably important response from our region's esteemed motoring titles. Probably. Uh, maybe. And that's where the problems start. Southern Africans, and indeed the rest of the world, love a good bandwagon fueled by the thick gravy of conspiracy theories. And to quickly unravel our accusations, they've cottoned onto the lethal combination of EV pricing, virtue signaling, battery toxicity, insufficient range, recycling problems, slow charging issues, consecutive charging issues, group charging issues, lack of infrastructure, plus that Russian roulette called grid collapse, or load shedding. It seems that an EV, any EV, simply can't drive from Uchu to Joburg without poisoning a dozen Chilean children, then needing 1100 hours to charge, if the charger is available, but still run out of juice near a sunburned sign proclaiming Futsec Fontaine 90. That is, of course, grossly exaggerated, but there is quite a bit of truth in that scenario. Our first defense of an EV like this e-Golf comes in the shape of usage. We wouldn't want to drive to Joburg with this vehicle, or any others, to be honest. But that's beside the point. In our eyes, the primary purpose of an electric vehicle is to save money during inner city and very limited regional trips. They're not supposed to be mile munchers. This was immediately proven by my two colleagues who discovered that range anxiety is a very real thing, and that older generation EVs take much longer to replenish their power source than the latest and greatest Voltmobiles. Our newest staff member plugged this car into one of three available chargers underneath a local shopping mall. So what happens if EV numbers double or quadruple over the next few years? How many more chargers will they build? And what will the fees look like, depending on vehicle or location? When my colleague emerged from the mall, he found this e-golf only half charged, because a BMW i3 owner had pulled up next to the EV bays and taken the charging cable from our VW. Fun, hey? Although it's technically not possible to remove the charging plug from a locked car, so we assume he forgot to lock it. But that brings us to an ugly side of society. Can you imagine the self-righteousness of a Porsche Taycan driver who needs a quick top-up but has to stand in line behind a slow-charging old Nissan Leaf? On top of that, it turns out that electric cars behave like any other battery-powered device, like a cell phone, by losing charge capacity as time goes by. However, with its mileage gently sailing past 25,000 kilometers, this electric Volkswagen was still performing as its maker intended, nor to 100 in about 9 seconds. Yet, it never really hit the distances claimed by its range indicator. To be fair, most internal combustion vehicles will behave in a similar manner, unless you start treating them in a favorable way. Which is why, when my turn behind the wheel arrived, I did exactly that. Long distances and fun outings were relegated to classic V8 coupés, while short and boring errand runs, which the V8s detest, were allocated to my temporary electric steed. And to sum up my experience, the Volkswagen e-Golf was absolutely brilliant. Adopting the driving style of a thrifty pensioner, I even completed one trip without losing a single kilometre of range. This was possible thanks to the VW's Eco Plus driving mode, and B gearbox setting, which seems to be a rather hectic regenerative brake setting. If you're not in a hurry, like in a traffic jam, this e-golf makes perfect sense. We've driven a few EVs over the years and have grown to love their new approach to energy consumption, the different set of driver information and newfound capabilities, including savage acceleration. To be honest though, this e-golf doesn't feel stupidly fast. Its traffic-like performance is okay-ish, while top speed is limited to 150 km an hour. That's all perfectly acceptable, even more so because it's wrapped in one of the most accomplished vehicles the world has ever known. The packaging and classless design of a Golf work beautifully in unison with a gentle and silent electric power plant. It's not exciting, nor terribly futuristic, but it's extremely well executed.
In closing, we feel a bit sorry for Volkswagen and other leading car brands who were pressured into the EV direction because someone decided that it worked for their lifestyle in Switzerland. These people have never been to Futzekfontein, don't know how Stellenbosch i3 drivers behave, nor do they know what ESCOM is, or the kind of tricks they get up to. So VW had to build the e-Golf, and many other incredible EV offerings, to appease an angry greeny mob, which is completely detached from the plight of the developing world. It's wonderful that they brought this example for testing, vielen Dank, but our guess is that local EV sales will be very limited to large cities and towns, where, if you've been paying attention, this e-Golf proved to be absolutely perfect. <laughs>